Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I go through a deep dive and explain how to read plans I use to build this Pronto RC airplane. Let's get to it. As you can see, the Pronto flew pretty good in that video. I've been building RC model airplanes for about 50 years. In addition, I've designed and have published six RC model airplane designs. My first one was back in July 1998 for RC Modeler Magazine. It was the Yankee Mike airplane. It was a sport airplane, kind of inspired by the uh, Buell Pop. So I have a pretty good idea how to draw plans, what plans should contain, and um, how to read plans. And in this video, I want to go through in detail how you can read and understand a set of RC model airplane plans to build your own unique RC model. Thank you, as always, for likes, subscribes, as well as a super thanks. Thank you very much. They do help the channel a lot. Back in the day, 20 years ago, it was very common for RC models to build their airplanes from plans. All the major magazines, <clears throat> RC modeler and so forth, they would have up to three original plans in each issue as part of their business model, how they made uh, money. Many, many of those plans are still available uh, for the Pronto. That was a model airplane news plan. I have the website in the description where you can buy it, where I bought my full-size plan. So there are literally thousands of these full-size plans out there that can make a really enjoyable aspect of your RC modeling um, experience. So what I do before I decide to build an airplane from a set of plans, I kind of go through in my mind what type of airplane I like, what are my building skills, what does my wood shop have. For example, does the model plane I want to build have a lot of metal work? Does it have fiberglass? Even things like the wingspan. I try to keep my models under five feet wingspan. They just fit better in my car. So have some ideas in your head how you want to do that. For myself, I like models under five feet wingspan. I like sport flyers. I like basic plywood and balsa wood construction. For the uh, metal, I pretty much limit myself to uh, the, wire, the wire, music wire needed for the landing gear. And I cover just about all my models with monocoat. I'm very happy with my workshop and the way I build models to use that as kind of a guiding input on selecting what type of plan that I want to use to build an RC model airplane. Two other things to keep in mind for plans <clears throat> is the vast majority of the plans that you'll see, especially the older ones, will have gas-powered engines. You can certainly put in the gas motor. Most people put in electric motors. In this description, we'll go through shortly on the Pronto. I convert it from a 0.15 gas engine to an electric motor, so you'll have to do that as part of your build process. In addition, Note also that the plans are full size. Um, RC model airplane plans are drawn that way. You can take measurements directly off the plans for the size of balsa, how big things should be. The plans can be pretty big, but full size is the way to go. So my original video of the Pronto, I'll put a link up here and into the description, was an overview of just a quick view of the plans. Then it was really focused on how to build a model from the plans. As a result of that video, I got a lot of requests from viewers um, I've never built a model airplane for plans. Could you do a little bit more detailed discussion of the plans and how you unlock the building code secrets in that plans to build a Pronto? That's what we'll do in this video um, here. So we'll take a, take a quick look at the full size plans. As you can see, it's a pretty big sheet. As I mentioned, the plans are full size. The plans are typically printed on one side of the paper. So what I do when I get the plans is I will cut them up into smaller pieces that are easy to handle. The wing, the fuselage, the tail surfaces, and so forth. It'll depend on the model. I've done that already. So when we go through the plans, you'll see that they're cut up into individual sections. The other thing that I do as we go through the plans that I encourage you to do as you study the plans, you have to be able to mentally build the model from the plans. Um, you just have to understand what they're telling you to do, have some idea how you're going to do that because you're eventually going to have to do that to build a model. Now in the Pronto, we have an excellent first plan for anybody. The plane was originally designed in 1972 by Dave Roblin. 
it's just a very normal sport fly with three channels. But what we're going to do, and we'll go through the plans here in a second, is make some changes. First of all, it's for a gas engine. We're not going to use a gas engine. We're going to use an electric motor. You find that when planes were designed back then for gas motors, there was a lot of vibration and weight from the motors. The planes had to be fairly strong, which means heavy, because they had extra wood in there to allow them to survive forces from that flight. I will, as we go throughout the discussion of the plans, show you ways where you can use thinner balsa, different techniques to make the model lighter. The plan for the Pronto with the gas engine back in 1972 was 2.5 pounds. My Pronto with battery came out 1.5 pounds. The lighter models fly a lot better. So that's kind of some things to think in mind. So with that overview, why don't we take a look with the wing, the fuselage, then the tail surfaces of the Pronto. So this is the wing of the Pronto. It's just a really basic wing, just a square wing. One of the things you're going to see right off the bat is ailerons. The original Pronto was three channels. It was elevator, rudder, and throttle. The reason for that were the servos were big, they were expensive, there just wasn't room to put in the fourth channel for the ailerons. It was very common to make a three channel model. So I'm going to discuss some of the modifications I made to make it a four channel model, which I, I really recommend you do today. So this is the wing right here. I've cut off this wing view. It's the full size of the wing. This is the center, half and half on each side. In addition, there's a front view of the wing. We'll go through that after we go through the top view. The top view of the plans are really pretty straightforward. Um, you have a leading edge, ribs, the two spars, the top and the bottom spars, they cover each other. That's why you just see one of the drawing, then a, tailing, a trailing edge. It's joined in the middle, and notice there's no ailerons on this. Now, some changes I made. This is the wing rib right here, okay? And this was uh, a copy actually made for the plan. The leading edge is a dowel, bottom spar, top spar, trailing edge. So you kind of visualize these items with the top view right here. Some changes I made to save weight. First of all, using a dowel for the leading edge was pretty common back in the days. It's a little bit heavy. I prefer a balsa. I used a one quarter square inch um, piece of balsa. And you can see that I drew just a little straight line here to put in the one uh, square piece of balsa. And I just shaped that with an X-Acto knife for a leading edge shape. I just It's easier to work with balsa than me. Also, due to strength, he had the top spar being 3 8 inch spruce. The bottom spar is balsa. All these notations are on the plans as you study them. Um, spruce is a lot of weight, and it's just not needed for this type of model, especially with my lighter weight. I used 1 quarter inch balsa for the top and bottom spar, and I had to make the cutouts just a little bit smaller to account for the 1 quarter inch um, as opposed to the 3 um, eighths inch on the plans. So that's what I chose to do. The trailing edge is what they call trailing edge stock. You can buy that when you buy your balsa. Um, this is um, how wide it is, 5 sixteenths, uh, excuse me, how, how thick it is and one one quarter inch back here. It can be a little bit less if you want, just you need a trailing edge of some sort and you put in notches to take care of the uh, wing ribs, which I did. Now the other thing I changed, this is 1 8 inch balsa. That's pretty thick balsa for the wing ribs. Again, for the gas model, they decided to do that. You don't need that. My ribs are 1 16th inch. It lightens it up. And you'll see also I included some diagonal spars just to decrease the warping. That's, that's an older technique. And I'll show a picture of what I mean by those diagonal spars to keep it from warping. Now, the one thing that I really disagree with on this is they essentially join the two wing halves in the center. That is not going to be strong enough to hold the wing panels together. You've got to have some sort of plywood doubler on either side of the top and bottom spars epoxied in place to ensure that the wing is held together. I'll show you a picture now of those doublers. It's very easy to make out of 1 16th, one -sixteenth inch plywood. You clamp that in with epoxy, you'll have a very, very strong bond on your um, wing spar. I do agree with the need for one quarter inch ribs here. The reason these ribs are a little bit thicker, that's where the fuselage goes on top of the wing. You need a little bit of strength where that goes on. 
Now, the other thing I mentioned is I added um, ailerons. I did not bother to draw those onto the plans. I just drew, um, I just um, created these um, ailerons on a 1 16th inch balsa. And um, I doubled them up a little bit with another 1 16th inch where the horn goes in for strength. And I just put that in there. And I put in the aileron servos underneath. And you just make normal little cutouts to mount the aileron servos. And you can do that as you build the wing. It's really not that complicated to do it. The wires go here. There's a Y connector at the receiver. And that's how they're connected to the, um, to the um, receiver of the fuselage. Also here, you can see a detail of the doubler and the spars. Here's a 1 16th balsa in front and the 1 16th inch balsa in back. So that makes an extremely strong joint with everything glued together. It's not just relying on the glue here. The other thing I did, you'll notice on the plans, there's quite a bit of distance between the ribs. I think that's a little bit too much. The covering is going to sag. What I do is I created um, a false ribs. The ribs go from the leading edge back here. If you look here, you can see the false ribs. This is a full rib going all the way back. This empty space here, there's no rib back here. You don't really need one. I created the false rib just for the front part. And you can kind of see that peeking in here, the false rib. And those are located every other open bay. It helps keep the leading edge a little bit more of an aerodynamic shape. The other thing that's not on the plans, they use um, rubber bands to hold on the wings. I, I like doing that. I put some popsicle sticks here over the covering. That way the rubber bands don't dig into the balsa of the leading and trailing edge. It'll just allow the wing to hold up with the stresses of flight. Now let's take a look at the fuselage and um, what we have to do to modify the fuselage. So the fuselage is here. The side view is the first thing I look at to study. Just a sneak peek of the tail surfaces. They're just flat balsa. They have three 6 inch balsa here for the fin, the rudder, and the um, elevator, the ailerons. What I did for lighter weight, I went from 3 6 inch to 1 8 inch. I think that's fine. Notice a very large rudder here. The reason is with a three channel model, you needed that rudder to turn it. I kept that size rudder, um, so I think it, it's okay the, and the elevator is fine. But again, one eighth inch balsa. So this is the fuselage. What you've got to do is study the fuselage. There is the side view here. There is the top view here. And there's some sections with AA and BB and the way they locate that these two A's right here is AA, and the BB is located right here. The benefit of these side views, you can see the wing here. This shows the size of the balsa for the side. Now notice this is 3 16 inch balsa. You can tell that because you can actually uh, measure it right off of the plans with 1 8 on the outside. That's pretty heavy. They had that. Um, doubling all the way back here to allow for the engine. You don't need that for an electric model. I used 1 8 inch balsa along the, um, for the whole fuselage except the top and bottom surfaces which are 1 16 inch balsa. Now what you have to do through studying the plans, you can see there's a side of the fuselage, there's an angled up and then the top at section AA. So what I do is I study the plans till I can figure out the outline of the fuselage side and what I did was I drew little blue arrows to help me locate that. And then I traced over it and I created this as the um, outline for the fuselage side. That goes right on here like that. So this is a pretty important piece that you do. What you do is you put this over your 1 8 inch ball so you'll need a 48 inch length and you cut it out. This will be your fuselage side that you then can put on the formers and start building the fuselage from these two sides. And as I mentioned, that was 1 8 inch um, balsa. Now the other thing I had to do, because I'll show you a little bit how we relocated the electric motor. Because we didn't have that heavy motor in front, I was concerned the model was going to be tail heavy. So I wanted to not have to add a lot of nose weight. What I did as just kind of a mathematical trick is I made the nose a little bit longer so the electric motor is further forward with the battery to help make the nose bounce out. As it turns out, I was overly conservative on that. It, it turned out to be almost a little bit um, tail heavy, uh, nose heavy. 
adding weight to the tail, I could fix that by adjusting the battery, but just a lesson learned I didn't know. Now, the other thing we can see on the top view, <clears throat> this is the gas motor right here, and these are the motor mounts. These are very common back with gas engines. This is actually just rock hard maple. You'd buy these mounts, incredibly strong wood. You'd glue that to the side, drill holes, and you'd screw in the motor. It, it was strong enough that you never had to worry about it with these two mounts. Clearly, we do not need that with electric motors. So what I did was I took my electric motor, held it on the plan, and I just drew in a firewall right here to where that motor would be and not use these side mounts because you don't need them for an electric motor. This is all reflected on making the nose a little bit longer. Just part of sketching this out here but you're gonna to have to just put in a firewall with enough clearance to the nose for your electric motor. We have a lot of room here because we don't need to worry about the fuel tank. This nose will be covered up till we get to the um, electric motor, so that's all fine there. The other thing that I'm gonna to have to do is build a hatch because the wing is rubber banded in place. We've gotta have some me methodology to get to the battery to swap it out between flights. Because I thought the battery was going to be located in this front part, I elected to put this um, hatchet here using a rare earth magnet just to keep it like that. It turns out that for balance, by the time I built the model, the battery is really back here. So I had to put another hatch located here that allowed me access to the battery with a little tray in here. So. Again, that's just part of the design process. I, I didn't know that I could have to have the battery that far back. So um, I still have this hatch. I don't use it. This is the primary hatch right along here. So that's the main thing for the um, fuselage. Everything else tracked along here. The plywood doubler for the uh, landing gear, that's a very normal thing. I kept plywood along here just to keep it strong for the landing gear. You don't want balsa down here. The top balsa worked out well with the existing formers. I'll show you a picture about the formers in place. Uh, here's a balance point, center of gravity, really. And then just everything is normal with the plans. The balsa, uh, the dowels for the um, wing hold down, you can see the outline of the wing located right here. They had one quarter inch, uh, one quarter inch square balsa push rods. That was fairly common a long time ago. I think nine rods are the way to do. They have cross braces across the top of the fuselage for an electric powered motor and I did not put mine in. I think the 1 inch balsa is completely adequate for that. I did keep the balsa uh, cockpit combing in there, the, the headrest, I think that looks okay. The tail surfaces I mentioned were a 1 8 inch balsa, that's all you need for this model. The one other item that's just off the plans is the landing gear. The landing gear is 1 8 inch landing gear. One eighth inch landing gear is, is pretty thick music wire, but you need that amount for the strength. You, you can't go below that. To use this landing gear, you just have to have a metal jig to bend it. Um, this is the jig that I bought. It works absolutely fine. It looks kind of weird on this one. I've got a video on exactly how I bent the landing gear for this model. I'll put the uh, description up here and a link in the description. The landing gear came out perfect as a result of using this jig in a vise. I was very, very happy with it. And here's the bottom view just with straps that goes in place, absolutely normal with the wheels. Everything's fine on that, but the landing gear is an important thing for this model. And you can see on mine, on the bottom and on the build video, it is just absolutely flat and true. I was very happy that it came out this way and big enough wheels for the prop clearance. For the electric motor, you can pretty much use whatever motor you want for a model with 1.5 pounds. Mine's a little bit overpowered with a Park 480 motor, but that's okay with a three cell. I'm happy to have the power because you can see from the video, it, it uses that fine and it lands absolutely, absolutely correct. So thank you very much for joining me in this video. Um, building an RC model airplane for plans is a lot of fun. You can just really add a lot of interesting models to your uh, collection of RC models. It's not that hard, but Make sure the model fits your capabilities, your workshop, what you'd like to do. Study the plans and just work through in your mind everything you're going to do. The model goes together pretty quickly and I think you'll have a lot of fun. And good luck with any of your plans built, uh, built RC models.